Lisa Strada opens with the exposition of Lisa Strada's plan to save and unite all of Greece. The scene opens, with Lisa Strada pacing back and forth in front of the Acropolis in Athens. The Propylaia, the gateway to the Acropolis is directly behind her in the background. Lisa Strada impatiently waits for the women of Athens and Sparta to meet her and discuss the war. Lisa Strada fumes that if she would have called an orgy in the name of Bachos, a celebration of sex and drunkenness, the women would have been out in the streets with tambourines, implying that no woman requires encouragement for sex. Lisa Strada's tirade is interrupted by Kleonic, her next door neighbor. Kleonic is older than Lisa Strada, but not quite old enough to be considered a matron. Lisa Strada tells Kleonic that she is distraught that the women will not come to talk about war and that she is ashamed to be a woman because of it. Lisa Strata can't understand why the women will put up with her husband's insults and deceit. Kleonic assures Lisa Strata that the women will come, but for the moment they are occupied with helping their husbands. Lisa Strata begins to outline to Kleonic her plan to save Greece. Lisa Strata claims that all hope of ending the war lies with the women, a comment Kleonic finds rather surprising. Kleonic can't understand how the women of Greece could possibly help end the war. Kleonic informs Lisa Strata that glamour is the only talent women possess and that there is nothing for a woman to do besides sit looking beautiful for her husband wearing the best of negligees and slippers. Lisa Strata believes that women's ability to attract and allure men, to look beautiful, sexy and well kept is exactly the key to ending the war. As Kleonic begins to get excited about Lisa Strata's ideas, a group of women enter from stage right. Lisa Strata tells Kleonic that these women are from the outskirts of town. The group is led by Marine, a young matron. Another group of women also joins the group, led by Lampito, a burly Spartan woman. Lampito is joined by two women, Ismenia, a pretty Boeotian girl and a massive Corinthian girl with large buttocks. In the Meridian Classic edition of Lisa Strata, the Spartans speak with an American mountain dialect to convey the Athenian attitude towards Spartans as backward and imperfect civilization. Lisa Strata and the other women look over and dissect the physical characteristics of Lampito, Ismenia and the large Corinthian that would attract a male best. Kleonic admires Lampito's bosoms and Ismenia's well-groomed pubic area and Lisa Strata points out the exceptionally large derriere of the Corinthian. The opening scene of Lisa Strata enacts the stereotypical and traditional characterization of women in Greece and also distances Lisa Strata from this cliched, housewife character. The audience is met with a woman, Lisa Strata, who is furious with the other women from her country because they have not come to discuss war with her. The discussion of war, obviously the domain of the male, is not something that females in Greece are accustomed to. Lisa Strata admits that if she had called for an orgy or a festival for the god Dionysus, the women would have filled the streets with tambourines in tow. The god mentioned by Lisa Strata is Bacchus or Dionysus, who is the god of wine. Bacchus often presided over festivities, drunkenness, plays and theatrical celebrations. The housebound woman that disgusts Lisa Strata so, is exemplified and affirmed by her next door neighbor, Kleonic. As Kleonic sympathetically explains to Lisa Strata, most of the women are probably off waking the maids or tending to children. Lisa Strata is not only angered because the women won't prioritize war and the peace of their country, but she is ashamed that the women won't stand up to the stereotypes and names that their husbands give them. Lisa Strata tells Kleonic, I'm positively ashamed to be a woman, and Kleonic proudly admits, that's us. Ironically, even though she despises the labels men give to women, Lisa Strata fits the stereotype of the devious woman. Lisa Strata deviates from the Grecian male world to further the Peloponnesian War and, with the help of other women, essentially takes over Greece and ends the war. But even though Lisa Strata deviates from the male urges, she does so in a masculine way, by exploiting women as sexual creatures. By requesting that the women use their attractiveness to make the males want them sexually, Lisa Strata encourages the women to play to their stereotype and exploit the sexual, idealized female. Like a man, with her plan for a sex strike in mind, Lisa Strata examines women for their sexual potential. When Lampito, Ismenia and the Corinthian girl enter, Lisa Strata scrutinizes the women's bodies, as a male would do. 
As Lisa straight and clinic look at Lampito, Lampito remarks that she feels like a heifer come fair time. In other words, Lampito feels like a piece of meat. The women also remark on the curves and genitalia of Ismenia and are delighted at her hairless vulva in accordance with Greek high fashion and are wowed by the monstrous buttocks of the Corinthian girl all features to which a male might be attracted. Therefore, women not only begin to see each other with male desire, but they exploit their stereotypical female identity as a source of power. In doing so, the women of Lisa Strait not only play upon the male stereotype that males cannot control their lust for women, but also simultaneously become more masculine themselves. Cleonic and Lisa Strait look at the other women as sex objects. As a pimp in reverse, the women look to see how difficult it will be for a man to resist each woman. Lisa Strait is ultimately the most masculine woman in the play. She, unlike the other females who attempt to escape the treasury to find their husbands, is able to fully ignore and reject her own attraction to males. In this way, Lisa Strata stands outside of the action of the other females of the play and works hardest to reject the fragility and frivolity that characterizes the other women. Lisa Strata's dual ability to reject her own sexuality while exploiting others enables her to create peace in Greece.